Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another workshop. This is the Back to Basics series during the summer of 2021. Welcome. It's California Federation of Women's Club. My name is Sonia Holt. I'm the communications chairman for the state. And today's workshop is all about chairman and being a chairman and being a chairman uh, and what you do. So please sit back, relax, and be part of this really great workshop. Our main speaker for today is Barbara Briley Beard our first vice president of the state and also president-elect. So welcome everyone. Good morning, Sonia Mathis, your second, your second VP is also here from CFWC. So uh, glad you're here. Glad all of you are here. It's nice to see you. And we're very grateful that you're gonna take the time out of your day to come and spend some time with us. I'm gonna apologize right off the bat. I'm gonna try to mute as much as I can, but we're getting a new roof at our house. All that pounding and hammering is over my head and there is not one thing I can do about it because they're putting down plywood. So sorry about that, ladies. You know, the other day we talked with the deans and we said that we were all like a box of crayons. I'm still going to stick with that because that's kind of how I feel. And when we have people come to our home for meetings, I'll take chalk and write different colors of chalk on my sidewalk that comes up to my house or out on the street. And we are, we're all just a little bit different, but in a way we're all the same because we're all fitting in the same box of CFWC. So I think today I'd like to say people are a blessing or a lesson, one of the two when we all know some of both, you just gotta love them all. I do want you to know that a lot of times someone has said, hey, at the beginning of the meeting, you're always looking down, what are you doing? Every single workshop, meet and greet, area, I write down the name of every single person who enters the room. If I catch it when you leave, I write down when you leave. I also write down every question. I make a question mark. I put the number, the person who asked it, who they ask it of, and generally a short response. I have all that information since we have been Zooming. So when you see me, that's what I'm doing. Like right now, I know there are 56 people in the room, but I've only got 40 names down. So when one of your chairman is speaking, then you'll see me writing down a few names too. We're very glad that you're here. And if you were a chairman that wanted to speak, you either sent some information that Lynn Youngstrom sent out. And by the way, when you want to join in on this, you go to reservations, you send an email to Lynn, and she forwards you the paperwork that you have to whatever the, you know, uh, workshop is going to be. That's where it comes from. We all get a lot of them. Sonia, Debbie, and I, we get requests. If we have it, we can send it back to you. But generally, we send it to Lynn so that Lynn Youngstrom knows who she's sending the information out to and can recognize everybody's um, info. I'm reading right now in chat that some said they didn't get any paperwork. I sent some out. I know that Deb Bushnell did. So we'll make sure that you get that, okay? Just leave that in, please. Okay, so first what we're going to do is we're going to let the people who wanna to speak to you today speak to you first. Then I have some pages that I went through that say, what is a good Dean of Chairman? Who are they? That was part of the information we sent out to Shirley. So we'll have to enter and we'll have to make sure we get it to you. The first person that responded to us was Deborah Bushnell. She takes care of legislation and public policy. She just said, well, what if I put an LPP because it's so long? I said, they'll think you are a police officer. Anyway, Deborah has been around. We were area VPs together for many, many years in CFWC. She's going to make the trip from, I don't know, the northern border of California and come all the way down and speak at the Norwalk Women's Club this year and we're excited to have her come and stay with us too. So anyway, if you could unmute yourself, Deborah, you are first up. Let's hold our uh, questions if we can. Well, we'll do them after each section, okay? So Deborah, take about 10 or 12 minutes and then we'll have some questions after. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. And welcome to everyone on the screen today. As your legislation and public policy chair, I look at and research proposed legislation, both in California and nationally. My goal when I started is the same as the GFC 
2020-2022 administration, which was uh, encourage participation in the Legislation Action Center, educate members about GFWC and CFWC's legislative priorities, educate members about their local impact of civic engagement, mobilize members to unite their voices to advocate for GFWC and CFWC, and build mutual and lasting relationships with local, regional, and national decision makers. Now for a little history. In 1911, California Governor Hiram Johnson, and that name should be familiar because he also signed the suffrage uh, 19th Amendment for California, began his term by promising to give citizens a tool they could use to adopt laws and constitutional amendments without the support of the governor or the legislature. The 1911 legislature placed a package of constitutional amendments on the ballot that put more control of California politics directly into the hands of the people. These amendments included the ability to recall elected officials, the right to repeal laws by referendum, and the ability to enact state laws by initiative. All legislation begins as an idea. Ideas can come from anyone. The process begins when someone persuades a senator or assembly member to author a bill. Supporting or opposing a bill usually means phoning, writing, and perhaps visiting your legislature and his or her staff. For over 100 years, General Federation of Women's Club members have raised awareness of issues requiring attention at the national, state, and local levels. Our efforts are practical, not political. The strength of numbers helps us seek beneficial solutions to problems at all levels of involvement. We must continue to use public advocacy to seek solutions to our local, state, and national concerns. Our efforts can change lives. The General Federation of Women's Club members have worked to pass laws affecting highway safety, juvenile justice, women's suffrage, the rights of the disabled, equal pay for women, resources for victims of domestic violence, and penalties for domestic abusers. The General Federation of Women's Club Legislation Action Center is currently following and urging the support of bills that reauthorize the Child Abuse Prevention and Treatment Act, the Equal Rights Amendment, and a bill to amend the Fair, Standard Act, Fair Labor Standards Act of 1938 to provide more effective remedies to victims of discrimination in the payment of wages on the basis of sex. The Legislation Action Center was established as a primary tool that the GFWC uses to educate and mobilize members on proposed and current legislation. Members who sign up for the Action Center receive updates and calls for action on specific legislation that GFWC is supporting. These updates let members know when to contact their le national legislators about a bill. Additionally, if a state federation provides GFWC with at least 72 hours notice, GFWC can send out a legislative alert to that state's members regarding one or more pieces of state legislation. To realize the full potential of this tool, however, member must sign up for the Legislation Action Center found at the mem member portal at gfwc.org. Community involvement requires education in addition to action. Members are encouraged to use the information from the Legislation Action Center notifications and share it with their local communities. I am excited today to share with you a challenge that has been issued by the Legislative Action Center. The challenge, which state will have the largest increase in their percentage of members registered on the GFDC Legislative Action Center? Which state will be number one in the region? Which state and region will be number one in the country? Our goal from July 1, 2021 to June 1, 2022 is to sign up as many CFWC members to the GFWC Legislative Action Center. The reward, bragging rights and recognition. I encourage all members in California to sign up for the center. If there is an interest in your club, begin, begin a legislation and public policy group within your club. You can then take a more in-depth look at legislation, choosing to investigate and support bills that concern you and your members. Then report back to your club. This counts toward your annual reports. Very important. 
Currently, California only has 8% of our membership signed up for the Legislative Action Center. That's only 911 out of 11,157 members. I would love to see us at 100% considering we are the la largest federation in the General Federation. I will be posting more information on our Facebook page and in Quick Bites. I am available by phone and email. I'm willing to come to your club or district to speak in person or by Zoom. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deborah. Uh, I mean, wonderful, wonderful information. Um, does anyone have any questions for Deborah? Okay, hands are coming up. So Sonia or Debbie, will you guys? Yes. Our those? first question comes from Catherine Chu. Catherine. Hi, uh, good Hi, morning. Catherine. Hi, good morning. Um, you know, my question is, um, I know on the GFWC um, end of the Legend Legislation Action Center, they're able to go into the computer and see who has signed up and mm -hmm. then that's where we get the numbers is there right. any way for us in our districts or our clubs to be able to go in and see which one of our members or how many even if it's in a general way how many of our members or how many of our members in the district um even if it's not specifics um what, what i'm thinking is that it may be that that some of the membership says well we have a legislation um mm -hmm chair and that chair is the one who disseminates the information to us and so they don't feel um it necessary to sign up individually mm -hmm. they may just be getting the information from their chair um what it might help is that if we don't have a legislation chair is to be able to appeal to the members and say we don't have one we want to make sure that you're getting that information and we currently have 12 members who, who signed up so that we can give them a definitive number. Okay. Um, off the top of my head, I do not know, but I have sources and <laughs> I've written your name down, Catherine, and I will find out and get back to you. And I will actually, I'll see what the whole state looks like. Cause all I had, I got information from the WSR uh, legislation public policy person, which is Carol um, Lopez Lucy. So I will be calling Carol and then probably national and see what I can find out for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Catherine. We're going to lower your hand and I'm going to ask you to mute yourself. And our next question is Diane Waterhouse. Diane. Yeah. Hi. Um, <clears throat> I received a phone call last week from a Yorba Linda uh, member who had some concern about um, Assembly Bill 953, uh, racial identification. Um, I've been trying to find out a little bit more about this. She has some concern as it relates to um, uh, picking up uh, sex traffic women and uh, if, they're, if their pimp is, is black, or a minority that they get harsher penalty than if, I, I, I don't really know mm -hmm. how to explain it, but it has to do with that, that okay. bill. And uh, she was concerned that it was also gonna end up becoming a uh, national. Um, okay. I have been trying to find out information and uh, I've been working on something else, so I hadn't gotten a hold of you yet. I think okay. it's something that you could probably help help right. with. Okay, that's Assembly Bill 953. That's correct. Okay, I will I'm not uh familiar with it, but I will see what I can find and get back to you. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Deborah, and thank you, Diane Waterhouse. You lower your hand, please, and mute. Uh next is I have Pat. Pat, you have a question or a comment? I do. Um, as an educator in California, and I moved here from another state, I paid into Social Security. And because I've taught in California, I am not allowed to collect my entire Social Security. It's called the Windfall Elimination Act. And I think it applies also to police officers and firefighters as well. 
is that something we can get involved in as far as, I mean, I'm not talking CFWC, I'm talking starting at the club level, just sending emails and supporting the um, elimination of that windfall elimination act so that we can collect our social security or the entire amount. Um, yes, if, you, if your group, um, your club has done the research and they've, uh, we, you would have to do like a resolution and then you could support it. Uh, the resolution part, you probably should talk to, our oh, name just went out of my head, the resolution Mickey chairman. <laughs> Deborah, it just went, Mickey, Reed. Mickey, thank you. Mickey Reed. <laughs> Mickey Reed. Uh, but yes, it's, as long as that's something that your club fully supports and it's just not one individual, then yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, thank you, Pat. We appreciate knowing all of this information. Thank you for coming forward. Um, we have the next question <clears throat> is Linda Kuntz. Linda? Uh, thank you, Sonia. Can you hear me? We yes. can, thank you. Oh, good, then I fixed my problem. That's what I wanted to see. Okay, thank you. Okay, have a nice day. All right, our next question or comment comes from Yolanda. Yolanda? Thank you. I 8% is really a disappointing number. Mm -hmm. And I think it's great that those who do subscribe have subscribed and hope that they will encourage their membership to get on the list. What is also important is that when we receive notifications or acknowledgements from the senators that or the, any of the uh, political people that we respond to due to a legislative action alert that we, re we forward that to GF because mm -hmm. they yes. want to know. Yes. Thank you, Lolanda. All right, so that is all of the questions that we have for Deborah Bushnell. Anyone right before we go to the next speaker, I'm gonna send it back to Barbara. Uh, Deborah, thank, thank you, you so much for everything you do. And Yolanda, yes, I'm gonna you, lower Deborah. your hand, my friend. <laughs> Deborah, you are a wealth of information. Thank you. We really appreciate everything that you do, not only for CF, but for your club and your district also. Thank you so much. Looking forward to seeing you in Atlanta. Okay, the next person, your chairman who asked to speak today is Carol Burkhart, and she is Advocates for Children, a most important topic for all of us. So Carol, I see you're unmuted. The floor is yours, please. Thank you, Barbara. Um, I have two things to say. First of all, what I've been working on the last few weeks is uh, some different laws that have gone into or uh, assembly bill, uh, different things that have gone into action in the last 10 years about transitioning youth from foster care into independent living. And I'm gonna be telling more about this at the convention. Um, so speaking of the convention, this maybe is not the appropriate time, but I'm gonna throw it out here. Uh, I'm looking forward to San Diego. I think the rest of you are, I hope you are. And I am not gonna have any stress getting down there because I'm going on the train. I will be doing Amtrak from San Luis Obispo all the way to San Diego, Surfliner. It's delightful. Now here's my offer. This is my offer, ladies. If you're in Southern California, it doesn't count. But if you're in Central California, Central California, or Northern California, and you would like to ride the train with me, let me know. You can come down the day before. I am taking the train on the second, by the way. Uh, you can come down the day before, uh, stay at my home. I have two guest rooms with queen size beds, two extra bathrooms, and uh, I will get you to the train station and we can laugh at the I-5 freeway as we go down. And look at all that traffic. And that is the end of what I have to say. Let me know if you're interested in my offer. Deb, you probably need to go down the day before, but it's, it's open to you. Think about it. <laughs> Thank you, Barbara. Thank you so much, Carol. 
will be some of those people on the I-5 freeway driving down and they'll be passing us by. But Not we're my problem, the, dear. <laughs> I know, we're taking all the sound equipment, so that's why we got to have a vehicle on this. Yeah, okay. I understand. I took the train to San Diego last time. It was absolutely delightful. It was two hours late. Who cares? I took the train when we went down to LAX. Yes, there were a little, few little changes. It was just so simple. So yes. public it, transportation can be good. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes, I think there's going to be quite a few riding the train. I've talked to a couple of other people that are going to, too. So when they see you on uh, the video, they might be calling you up. Uh, Thank you very much, Diane, for you know everything that, and Carol, that you do, all of you, we're real, most grateful. Carol Burkhart, Advocates for Children. Okay, the next person that we heard from was Diane Waterhouse. She has to have the longest chair name in the state of California. Domestic and Sexual Violence Awareness and Prevention. It takes me all the way across my page, an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper just to write her information down. So I have, the, you... the, I have the sign back here on my couch. It, would, it wouldn't fit the screen. <laughs> Amen to that. Amen to that. I hope, Diane, that um, you got my email reply back today on your trifle. All I right. Did. And that you will be sharing. So she will be talking to you right now on campus um, sexual assault. Diane, you have the floor for 12 minutes if you would like. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Well, it won't take that long, but thank you. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to show you there is a brochure available on Quick Bites that profiles all of the separate categories. Because there are more than there were originally. There are actually eight categories under this um, chairmanship. Uh, intimate partner violence, elder abuse, child abuse prevention, human trafficking, teen dating awareness, campus sexual assault, military sexual abuse, and violence against Native American indig and Indigenous women. Um, they're, they're just, there's a wealth of information uh, available. I put just a tad bit of it in here, but it might be helpful to come sort of spotlight on uh, some certain focus. What I have been working on just recently is college campus safety for, for women. Um, it's a trifold. I'm hoping that it will be available on Quick Bites uh, come Monday. Um, but here's, here's the es essence of what I found out. I, I, could, I could have written a book. Uh, but the beginning of the school year can be such an exciting time for college students as they begin to establish themselves as independent adults but unfortunately can be one of the most dangerous times for women. It marks the beginning of the red zone from the first day on campus until Thanksgiving break, when the risk of sexual assault is said to be at the highest. More than 50% of college sexual assaults take place between August and November, and often to those newest to campus. That's why it's vitally important that women equip themselves with the knowledge and implements to make their campus experience safe. Always be aware that you are a, pit, a potential victim of a crime, stay alert and trust your own instincts. And so on one page, it says, uh, at a glance, know your way around the campus. And that may be one of the most important things. Uh, I, I can picture myself wandering around, wondering where things are. And you kind of look uncertain, if, especially if you're alone, you are kind of a target. So know your way, know, you, know where every uh, security telephone, know where every place where a lot of people gather are and learn that before the first day you're running around trying to find your classes. Use locks on all the things that you need to use locks on never walk alone after dark, use the buddy system or the university uh, emergency or the escorts. Uh, know where the emergency systems are on campus, carry a whistle, pepper spray, and an alarm perhaps. Uh, all the whistles and pepper sprays are allowed and don't be afraid to use them, that's what. Uh, take a self-defense class if you have a chance. 
Take advantage of campus escort services. Be aware of your social media settings. Avoid drinking too much. Always have emergency contacts in your phone. And so, and then I have spotlighted uh, on the other pages, more specifically little tips. Like if you have a car on campus, check it out. Park in well-led areas and, and kind of check out around your car before you unlock the door. Um, anyway, any a, a number of things in this brochure. I left this blank. It doesn't have my name on it. It just has GF and CF on it. And uh, so that a club could put their own club information on it. And these could be handed out. Uh, I don't, I'm not quite sure exactly where it could actually be on a, on a college campus too. But this can be a, a wealth of information for uh, a young girl, especially the first year on campus, but also upperclassmen who tend to be a little bit complacent after they've been there for a while. And between the two brochures, that's what I have now. I'm working on other ones, but it's, it's a lot more challenging than I ever expected it to be. Uh, somebody said to me the other day that my problem is that good enough isn't good enough. <laughs> I'm not sure whether that's true about me. If you saw cupboards, closets, and drawers, that's so not true. But at any rate, um, these are gonna be available on Quick Bites. And thank you, that, that concludes my report. Thank you very much, Diane. We really, really appreciate and you know, there is something to be said about perfectionism because I saw this yesterday for the first time. It's wonderful. And you know, you will be able to go in and print them out. I hope you have a color printer or can get Office Max to do them. They're wonderful to hand out. Uh, Linda, hold on just a second um, and we'll get to you. A couple of things, you know, when your daughters or granddaughters go off to college the very first time, there is nothing that says they do not have to not wear a life alert either. It can also come in bracelet form that they just push a button on their wrist for it. Um, it doesn't only have to be, you know, someone elderly that lives alone. We can protect our youth when they're out there too. And the other thing is we had a retired police officer come to our district and speak. He was very good. And he said that there's a, in a hotel, it's like a little mm, triangular rubber thing. And besides the deadbolt lock and the chain lock, you push this little thing into the door so that a person cannot enter that room. And he actually was selling them for $20. So a lot of us bought them to give to nieces or granddaughters, that type of thing. Okay, Sonia, I'll let you go to questions. <clears throat> Thank you so much. And I can hear that sound behind you. So, oh, my uh -huh. friend. I'm so I am, sorry. No, but I feel terrible that you're doing that all day. <laughs> so our first question is by Linda Kuntz. Linda? Okay, thank you, Sonia. Okay, um, as far as those brochures, um, I'm sure all of us, when we've been in the office stores, you've seen those narrow stands, the plastic stands where you can just put brochures. and um, I just think a perfect place at all of the colleges, universities would be in the campus library. Um, and I, you know, to put the stand up to go ahead and find out and ask, you know, of course, if you're able to do that. But um, somebody who, you know, and this is really a sensitive subject, of course, um, and they might just go in there into the walk into the library casually and see it there and just pick up a couple of brochures. And then that would entice them to, if they needed help, to go ahead and seek it. Thank you, Linda. Our next question or comment comes from Sherry Meyer. Sherry? Thank you. Um, that was very interesting uh, regarding the information that that before Thanksgiving is a higher percentage of problem areas. Uh, I do have a couple of questions regarding that. With wherever this report came from, did they uh, give any specific reasons as to why it changes after Thanksgiving? Did they give any statistics regarding in the before part 
um, each of the four years. Uh, obviously, freshmen perhaps are more vulnerable, but you also mentioned that upperclassmen can become a bit complacent. So do they break it down at all? And um, my last question would be, um, did they give any specific reasons or, or priority reasons for the assaults pre-Thanksgiving? Okay. Can I take it one by one? <laughs> um, Barbara? Diane, can you answer any of those questions that Sherry has for us? If you would unmute yourself and go ahead and respond to her, please. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm sorry. I thought I, I, thought I was uh, unmuted. Um, it, the, the information was from the rape uh, and incest, R-A-I-N-N, a national organization, but it was also from a couple of other sources and um, it didn't actually say the very specific reason other than to say that those newest to campus have a tendency to be so excited about where they're at and also so heady with the freedom that they have on campus that now they don't have people kind of watching over them. And so uh, they tend to be a little bit more complacent and perhaps some of the girls also can be um, a little bit more susceptible to some uh, guy coming, you know, paying attention to them and such. Um, it didn't go into specifics as far as why it happens, uh, but I've read it about four different places. So, um, and it has to do with, I, I'm sure it has a lot to do with newness on campus, whether it's the newness of the school year or the, or the younger students. Um, it, to me, it was a very alarming statistic. And it doesn't mean that girls should let their guards down after they get back from Thanksgiving vacation either. Um, I, I, it's kind of a sad commentary that girls so excited to be uh, on the college campus pursuing what they're really interested in to have to really worry about this. But it, it is an absolute fact of life, uh, no matter what your age or no matter what your experience. So. Um, I could, I, I could look into this further, but I have stacks of paper of things that I have gone through to try to glean something that would fit in a trifold. Um, it, it, it's challenging at best. And uh, uh, I think what this serves, to me, this serves as the very basic to give a girl a little bit of a warning. Um, college campuses have their own very detailed booklets magazines and et cetera, full of stuff. And so uh, I always uh, hope that they will do that, but this is just something for our clubs to have available for their daughters, granddaughters, family, friends, and whatever. Uh, there are very specific college campus ones as well. All right, thank you so much for that answer. Excellent. Um, so our next question or comment comes from Debbie. Debbie, you have a question? I do. I have a comment, actually. Um, two things. One is that while for obvious reasons, our minds are thinking about the girls that are molested and abused when they're on campus, but don't forget, men get, young boys get raped on campus, too. So this is not just a female thing. And, and the other is, you know what, as you were talking, I was thinking it might be hard for me to get a bunch of these things on a college campus. But what if we all give out scholarships to kids that are going away to school. What if as part of that package that we give them, either with their check or whatever we hand them in person, why don't we give them one, one or two of those for them to take as part of our parting wisdoms to them to keep this in mind and to be careful when they're new on campus? Just a thought. Thank you, Debbie. Our next question or comment comes from Catherine. Catherine? Hi, um, I'm so excited to be able to get the um, the new brochure. It looks wonderful. Um, my my first thought always is community outreach, um, and not so much about the federation and about our membership, but who are we? Who do we want to reach? Um, here in Southern California, where I live, we have a large majority of 
of students and uh, who are on campus who um, are bilingual or where their first language might be Spanish. And if there's um, maybe any thought of uh, having the brochures um, with Spanish, um, I, I know one of our clubs, their yearbook has Spanish in it. Um, some of the campuses here have a majority of Spanish speaking students. Um, so if we, we do want to outreach into our communities, um, and, and I don't know it, whether that's something that we, that we want to pursue on the state level, or if I gave the brochure to one of our uh, Spanish speaking clubs, if they wanted to um, translate it and then have the um, ability to use the same format that you have put together for the brochure, maybe that's something that we can we can do. Um, but I'd just like to explore that because I, I do know our, our own membership, although, you know, for our, our membership here uh, for my district is very, um, uh, uh, we have a, a nice mixture of not just Spanish speaking, but um, uh, other languages as well. But I think we, we, in California, we start out with Spanish and that might be a, a way we can outreach to, to students who, who uh, are at these campuses. All right, thank you, Catherine. Great ideas. Okay, our next question or comment comes from Myrna Binford. Myrna? There I am. <laughs> I wanted to thank Diane for bringing that up because I have two granddaughters that are going away to college this year and they've already been given this talk. We yeah. weren't sure why it was no, you know, August to November, but whatever. The other thing is that uh, my one daughter has told her daughter that if she has a drink, if she has to go to the bathroom, she takes a drink with her or she gets a new one when she gets back. And the last thing is we had a gentleman talk to us about security. And if they have a car, evidently if they get, you know, there's a problem with the car or something that they carry a sign that says call police so that the other motorists will know that there's a problem. Mm -hmm. That's it. All right, thank you, Myrna. Great ideas, everyone. Thank you for bringing them forward. <clears throat> the next person that has a question or comment is Sheila. Sheila. You have to unmute, my love. You want me to ask you to, there you go. Yeah, you got I, I, I just got it. I'm a little handicapped here, one-handing it. Uh, I, my granddaughter just graduated from college and one of the things uh, is about the August to November. It's because the students are lonely. They're away from their family, sometimes for the first time, and they're looking for connections, you know, for companionship. And they don't always pick the right people. And the next thing you know, they're in a car, supposedly going to be chatting and becoming friends and, uh, and they have get the wrong person who abuses them. And these things happen. As far as the different language, that is an excellent uh, idea. And I was wondering if maybe the, um, the, the brochure could be made with a link in it to, uh, to it in a different language. Um, would that be something that would be of interest to, to us? Would that be workable? <laughs> Okay, hey, thank you, Sheila. Our next question or comment is Linda Coons. Linda? Sorry, Diane, I just accidentally muted you. And I Mine there, and I just stay up. <laughs> okay, um, being retired from the school district, or I worked at a high school for many years. Right, it's, uh, it's gone now. And, um, and I know that um, in the department I worked in, it was really close to or almost next to the nurse's office. And another idea where those brochures could be disseminated would be in nurses' offices um, on college campuses, high schools, of course, uh, junior high schools. And also I was just wondering regarding your local police department and fire department um, in regards to the brochures, because I know I, saw someplace where the fire department, I believe, had teddy bears to help comfort somebody who had been through um, 
uh, some traumatic issue. I know that I've seen it advertised in my local paper. So um, that's just a, a couple of ideas. I mean, it doesn't, of course, it doesn't hurt to ask and to find out what the protocol would be, but police department, fire departments, and your nurse's office in all the schools would be great places for those brochures. Okay, thank you, Linda. Uh, our next question or comment comes from Debbie. Oh, I have uh, Shirley Lorraine. Shirley, sorry, Debbie, your next one on the list. Okay, I just had a, a thought. We have a number of junior at clubs and it seems to me that this subject would be an excellent one for the junior ec clubs to take on as a project as peers um, that they uh, the students that they would be talking to may be more receptive to them at that age level than they would be to those of us who have been around a bit. Um, so I think it would be an obvious um, connection to have our junior ets take this on as a project to go out and speak to some of the groups. Just a thought. Thank you, Shirley. We appreciate that comment. Uh, the next question comes from Kathy Cook. Kathy? You have to, there you go. I did, thank you. Most of us don't realize how old this problem is. I was taking classes at Cal State Long Beach in 1982, most, almost 40 years ago. And there had been several rapes on campus and they had just instituted a policy of the escort service, which is wonderful. But it's been ongoing for a lot of years and every generation is, thinks this is a new problem and we have to work to address it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. All right, that's all the questions, Barbara. Barbara, you're going to have to unmute. Barbara, you're going to have to unmute, love. Okay. <laughs> um, Diane, thank you. We really appreciate everything that you're doing. Wonderful. Uh, you know, yes, all the chairmen, you really work hard all year long, and they're getting to see some of that today. All the members that are here. There are 61 of you in attendance right now, so thank you for being here. The next person that came to us and said that she would like to speak with you today is Yolanda Petoski, and she is going to come and speak on civic engagement and outreach. So you have 12 minutes, dear friend, and then questions after. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Although I'm going to be very brief because everything I know and want to share, I do it on Quick Bites. My goal for this administration was to share my love and support of law enforcement and the military with the California Club Women, while also keeping an eye on other projects in this category, which are citizenship, crime prevention and safety, and disaster and preparedness. We know that civic engagement is promoting the quality of life in a community through political and non-political means. Quick Bites is an excellent tool to share information with our membership, whether it's possible projects or just educating our members of things in this program. One thing that helped me and helps me is to keep a calendar of potential observances that I might want to share with you. So I can let you know ahead of time in case this is something you should wish to uh, also participate in. Over 100 reports are received in this, in this program. And the hardest part for me as a chairman was to select the top 10 to forward to GF. Our membership is so creative. So whoever follows me in this chairmanship is really going to have a challenge. And that's all I have to say. Just look for the quick bites and you'll know what I'm thinking. Thank you very much, Yolanda. And then if you would please um, go ahead, Sonia, and do questions right now. Okay, our first Thank question you. for Yolanda is from Catherine. Catherine, question. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Yolanda, for speaking today. Um, as you know, homelessness is a, a huge issue in California. Um, there's been a lot of uh, homeless uh, encampments that are being cleared. Um, the uh, moratorium on evictions. Um, 
uh, if there is any material, because I think we can take it up and our, our presidents, uh, the president of our district, her, her project is on veterans, um, but I'm, I'm thinking specifically on veterans and homelessness. Um, and and um, because it is a, a multi-departmental and multi-tiered problem that we have in California, if there's a focus, because you know, for homelessness, it could be on mental illness, it could be on disabilities, it could be on addiction, but there's also veterans that is a part of that. And so if there's a way that, um, that we can maybe shine a light or show support for specifically um, veterans and where they can seek um, uh, assistance or what we might be able to do um, if there, there are um, donations, uh, that's maybe, you know, something coming around for, for uh, whether it's socks or whatever, for helping the homeless uh, veterans. Um, I would love that information. We can, uh, we can always take it up on a, on a district level, but I, I'm just thinking since I have you here, um, it, that is something that I think that might be an important um, issue, especially at this time. Thank you. The, um, many of the reports stated that the request for socks is something that uh, the homeless shelters ask for in abundance. So you can always do those collections. The VA centers all have homeless that they, home, and those are homeless vets. And then here in the LA area, we have an organization called Hope of the Valley, and they are building tiny home projects uh, where these little, Little homes will house two people. It's a communal setting as far as um, bathrooms, dining, and that type of thing. And my district, Sierra Cahuenga, has made this a district project to support a tiny home. The cost is $3,000. So there's um, a lot of things that the list is endless for homeless. And also... I and did see those homes. They are fantastic. The tiny home villages are just incredible. I completely forgot about that. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. And I'm very proud of my club for, for supporting and sponsoring a tiny home. All right. Our next question comes from Tony. Tony Lima. Yes. Hi. Um, Yolanda, do you know whether Knit Your Bit has started taking um, scars yet again? Yes, they are. Oh, great. And, um, it seems like they've increased their dimensions. They now say not smaller than six inches wide and and not shorter than 60 inches long, which is a really big scarf. Yeah. That is. Yes. OK, thank you, Tony. Thank Next. you. <laughs> All right, the next question or comment comes from Sheila. Sheila? Yes, hi, I have not heard of you, about your tiny homes. And, and are you saying each one only costs $3,000 to build? Yes. Oh, wow, because here in Redondo, we're doing the uh, pallet shelter homes. My club is working with that. And we have 18 of them, but they didn't cost 3,000 each. And our problem is finding uh, some place to put them. They, every community rejects them. That and is so a problem. That's, that that is and and the ours is fenced in and self-contained, and we have uh, medical help there and and uh, doctors help and the and and actually we also have um, um, legal help for them because a lot of them have tickets from being homeless or defecating somewhere that not supposed to and that sort of thing. And so they kind of help them bundle their tickets together and, and work it so they can get this off their shoulders so then they can help them get a job and get themselves established and going in life. Sheila, so, did you did you have a question at all? Yes, I'm just, are these, are these things, are they really called tiny homes? If I Google yes. tiny homes, it's- yes. Uh, if you want to read about it, go to hopeofthevalley.com. Fabulous. Uh, one of the uh, things, and I'm pretty sure Hope of the Valley's, the homeless shelters need to accept animals. A lot of uh, homeless people will 
fight going into a shelter because they are so attached to their animals. But um, I think those, those that are behind us now see how important it is to um, provide that type of shelter for the homeless person and the animal. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Our next question or comment comes from Wendy Curran. Wendy? Thank you. Uh, Yolanda, um, if we could maybe have something in Quick Bites uh, that gives uh, some information to everybody here in California about how to research and find out this information, um, that I would appreciate that. And I'm sure a lot of others would too. Thank okay, you. Okay, Wendy, I'll work on it. Thank, Thank you. you, Wendy. The next question or comment comes from Mary. Mary? Hi, yes, um, I'm a newer member, so I just kind of wanted to ask for clarification on something. Under this area, civic engagement, do you cover or do the clubs cover community projects where they touch and, and outreach, such as, say, Easter egg hunts for disadvantaged kids or something that's non-military or non-USO? Or I mean, is civic outreach just limited to this military? And no, it's not. Okay, no. so anything that touches in the community would be under your area also could be under health and wellness. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you, Mary, for asking that question. Clarification is always a good thing. And we're gonna lower that your hand. And Debbie has a question or a comment? Just a comment, and I also put it in chat. It, I, I checked, yo, because I wasn't sure either. It's hopeofthevalley.org. Org, thank you, Debbie. Yeah. All right, thank you, Debbie. And thank you, Yolanda. Back to you, Barbara. Sorry, I go to unmute, but I've moved. <laughs> I, I was actually unmuting somebody else at that moment. Thank you very much, Yolanda. We really appreciate all the work that you do too. It is wonderful to have all of you chairman. You know, I'd like to interject here. You know, if you look at the CFWC bylaws, as a chairman, there are 44 of you in the state of California. You are entitled to a one-time stipend of $200 for the work you do. You know, Diane does not have to pay for, it's her millions of hours of time that we don't compensate, but she can have the paperwork paid for. If you're putting out a brochure, Deborah Bushnell sent something out to all of you after we sent something. You don't have to pay for everything. And then if you have more, bring it to the executive board and certainly they will take a look at it. You know, Valerie's nodding her head there. You're, uh, we've so value everything that you do, but we don't want you to have to be always taking the money out of your own pocket to do it, okay? So make sure that you talk to us about that. We really appreciate. We don't want someone to say, oh, I can't be a chairman because I don't have the funds to do all this. Your research is on your own, but we can help with the paperwork or something that, you know, you might want to share with all of us. The next person who's going to come and speak to you this morning, who um, called and, or sent me a text message and an email, is Myrna Binford. She takes care of health and wellness in the state of California. And Myrna, if you will um, unmute yourself, you may have up until 12 minutes if you would like to speak to us. And please take us all to Hawaii if that is your background. Yeah, I would love to. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. My chairmanship is health and wellness, and I think over the last year and a half, it's been very, very popular. Uh, the members have been so creative, you know, even though they've been in kind of a box of staying at home or, or limiting their, uh, you know, out in the community activities, but they've really done a great job. Uh, when I think of health and wellness, it's mainly uh, the physical and mental health that's uh, you know, been um, what, primary over the last year and a half, but now I find that there's also financial worries. Uh, I think in my last quick bites, uh, I had several comments on this, that uh, the patients that have been coming home or had long hauler syndrome are, you know, being taken care of by their caregivers, who is often uh, could be uh, any member of the family, maybe a member of the women's club, but in talking to some of these people, they're exhausted, they need help. And so uh, with our club, we're trying to, in, in our uh, Sunshine Committee, we're trying to identify some of these people that uh, you know haven't been to club meetings or Zoom meetings 
you know, and seeing what they need. Do they need meals? Do they need, you know, someone to take them, uh, the member to a doctor's appointment? Just what do they need? It, it's, it's really gotten to be kind of sad as, you know, uh, you, you see the other end of this illness now. So uh, I'd like to just have all the clubs and districts be mindful, you know, uh, of these members and try to help them if they can. The other uh, recent activity that I've gotten into is Red Cross. Uh, I know several people in Red Cross and I've talked to them and they're, they're, they're desperate for blood. <laughs> the pandemic has just taken so much, you know, out of their services and everything and all they would be thrilled if a club or district could, you know, sponsor a blood drive, which is basically just call the mobile, blood mobile, and find a place for them to park and have the members come in and do registration for them, check the patients in, and then after the uh, patients leave, clean up the area that they've been in. So uh, the other thing that is kind of a happy note is that a little over a year ago, my husband found out that his father had another family. His father's now deceased, but he has now gained two brothers and two sisters that he never knew he had before. And so we visited them uh, a couple weeks ago and got a lot of medical information that is very helpful, you know, uh, with our children because before my husband and I were single children and you know, we had no medical information. It was always when my daughters asked, mom, did you do this? I'd say, the information stops right with me. I'm the, I'm the first responder more or less as to what, you know, you, you have. And uh, let's see, I think I discussed, and I thank you again, uh, you know, talking about the, uh, oh, the kids going to school because uh, it's a concern now that they are going back to college finally. I have three of them that are starting back after a year, you know, at home. Uh, I wanted to call uh, attention to both the GF program and the CF program uh, that lists some of the projects that are available in, uh, you know, this health and wellness program. Uh, we're, we're used to seeing, you know, people doing fundraiser and giving money here and there and, you know, and then all of a sudden that shut down and then they had to retool you know, to doing masks and, and blankets and food pantries and everything, uh, which is great. But now, uh, as I said, there's a lot more to the health and wellness program. And if you go to the CF and the GF sites, uh, you'll find out just what else is, you know, available uh, to work out now that we're able to get out in our, our communities and the uh, community organizations are able to reach out to us again. And lastly, um, we found that, that, as I said, not only physical and mental, but financial. Uh, we've had talk, people talk at uh, our club about you know, what they need to get in order and have just one person in the family after uh, you know, someone passes away uh, to be the decider of everything because uh, it's, it's just too much you know, going on at that point in time. And, uh, you know, there just needs to be one person that kind of can decide everything. And uh, check your insurances. We just, my husband and I, you know, been, you know, during this low period have been checking, you know, all of our finances, all of our social security stuff, you know, making notes and everything. And uh, we found out that this one insurance that we had, that had a base amount in, all of a sudden was declining and we couldn't figure out why because he had had it for about 30 years and every month on our bank statement we had the $117 allotment, $117 allotment and we couldn't figure out what the heck you know this other why this insurance policy was going down until we called we found out that oh they had raised their prices and about $500 and because the allotment is only $117 they were going in to the amount that we had set aside and taking it each month to make up, you know, the $500 that they were charging us. So it's very important that you do, you know, for your own peace of mind, uh, you know, get into uh, some of your finances. 
And let's see, I think that was all I had. Uh, I think I've mentioned about the nurse practitioners uh, now having, uh, or by uh, uh, January, 20, January 2023, will uh, be able to have their own practices. This will help with the, not only the nurse, but the doctor shortage. Although since the pandemic, there has been uh, an increase in applications to medical schools which is good because there has been quite a shortage as we all know. And I'd also like to encourage, if possible, the telehealth communications. Uh, I found out and used both my husband and I using this, that they are very careful with this. In fact, I think they're more studied than if you just go into the office and they look in their computer or medical record and say, oh yeah, you had this way back then. They, they come a little bit more prepared uh, when you know you're kind of face to face, you know, and you don't have the information right there, so I'd like to encourage that. I found out that uh, even though you have a certain complaint, that if they really feel it's warranted, they will get you in, you know, uh, right away. Okay, and I think that's it. You know, I I just encourage. Uh, more clubs and districts to contact me. They've, they've been pretty good. I have to congratulate uh, Vicki and Quick Bikes again because, uh, you know, that's where a lot of the questions, you know, what if, can we do this? You know, how do we do this? Where do we go? You know, questions have come from. So take care. All right. Thank you so much, Myrna. Um, I would like to start the questions. I'm going to remove your spotlight super fast. Okay. The first question is uh, Catherine. Catherine, you have a question? Yes. Thank, thank you, Myrna. Um, one of the things that I have found, uh, October is Mental Health uh, Awareness Month, and um, I know there are national numbers. You talked about telehealth, which I think is, is a really good idea. Um, mental health has become a huge issue um, with uh, our health care workers, law enforcement, educators, even our students uh, and, and elderly who have been, um, uh, you know, uh, quarantined, isolated this, this past year. Um, what I have found is, is I, I know there's one program that's on a national level under advocates that, um, that really outreaches only to Northern California. And so, um, so I'm always looking when I, when I keep going over the same thing, community, community, community outreach. Um, uh, if there are, um, uh, telehealth for for mental um, health or, or something like that that is that is in our area um, uh, I, I would love to be able to promote that I, I know not just in October but since October you know we'll be starting the new uh, district year club year um, to be able to get something that we can really try to focus on on mental health and, and what resources are out there for, for individuals? Uh, let's see if I'm still muted. Oh, Catherine, uh, I know that you can go through a primary care doctor. Uh, my granddaughter had, uh, she's only 19, but she's having a little bit of uh, long hauler syndrome. And the one thing that she has had is anxiety. And so she did, she was referred to a psychiatrist who verified that yes, she did have uh, moderate anxiety, but also depression, which you know we hadn't expected. We knew that she was anxious going away to school for the first, you know, she had a first year at home uh, online and now going away to school. And she's always been a perfectionist to begin with. But anyway, uh, she went just to her, uh, she was just referred to a psychiatrist by her physician. Fantastic. Thank you, Catherine. Um, I'm going to lower your hand and if you could go ahead and mute. Our next question comes from Sandra. Sandra? Uh, it's, it's not more or less a question. It's just saying that we take care of everybody. It seems like we take care of our veterans. We take care of, um, we give scholarships and everything. We had an occurrence in our club that we had a couple of ladies that were taking care of their husbands. So it was Christmas time and we decided 
Well, let's give her a gift. We gave her a gift of eight hours. We actually went over, stayed with her husband, gave her the whole eight hours to go out and do something. Another member had surgery. We took turns taking an evening meal over. So not only do we have to take care of everybody else, but maybe we should start taking care of our members. And we're thinking, why don't we do this more more often than just the holidays and stuff like that. So we started doing that within our club and it really gives, sometimes you just need a break when you're, take, when you're a caregiver, you just need a break. And she said it was the best thing that ever happened to her. So try to include your members too when you're taking care of somebody. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Sandra. I appreciate that. If you'll lower your, I'll lower your hand. And our next uh, question or comment comes from Anne's iPhone. Anne, you'll have to unmute yourself, my love. Oh, can you can you, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear can. me now? Yes, you okay. can. Thank you. I just I just lost myself on the computer, so I'm going to try this. But anyway, I wanted to add, um, which are absolutely wonderful comments. But homeowners insurance is very important to check too, because those of us that are in fire areas. Um, if you've had it for a long time, all of a sudden you realize you really don't have enough coverage. So that's <laughs> something to consider. And also on the college stuff, suicides are really up. And so that is something to be considering on college campuses too, both men and women. And what a, what a heartbreak um, to have that. So just something else to be thinking about of how could we reach out and, and help those folks? So just wanted to add those two things. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. We appreciate that. And uh, that, again, is another topic that we should look at. Um, all right, uh, Barbara, back to you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. We really appreciate you too, Myrna, for being here and sharing with us. And all the questions. You know, we have had 24 questions or comments so far. I mean, wonderful. We learn as much from the questions and comments as we do from the people who are presenting, certainly. So we appreciate all of you for that. Before we go on to our last speaker, I was just wondering, we have our second vice president for membership for CFWC here. Sonia, would you like to offer us a few words? Um, please unmute yourself and say something to our group. Well, I'm learning a lot, a lot. And I appreciate the effort of, of the ladies who are giving the talks, as well as those that are attending to have um, as many as we have today. It's fantastic. I think Barbara said 61. Um, you know, I learned a lot, you know, the tiny houses. I, I mean, there's so much, you know, that there's something for all of us today. And it, it's, it's um, just fantastic that we can get together in this fashion. And I thank you for attending. Thank you very much, Sonia, for being here. Absolutely. And we also have our CFWC parliamentarian and our state past state president, Ms. Valerie Barnes. And Valerie, would you like to unmute and say a few words to the ladies today? You know, I, um, I often love the story, you know, you get lemons and so you make lemonade. Well, we got this horrible crisis for this past year. And along came Zoom. And we often wonder, how can we reach members? How can we share? How can we, you know, just be together? And so we got Zoom. That's our lemonade. I know most of us are on it at least once a week. Uh, these classes, these sessions have been fantastic. I would like to ask one thing. I keep asking President Pam, how many are going to Augusta, to, uh, to Georgia? And I really would like you to let her know, drop her a note today saying you're going to the GF convention. Because it really is important for her to know what is our, uh, what is our, our representation going to look like? So, and I'm looking forward to it. Um, I started yesterday on the packing stuff because remember you got uh, the convention, 
and then you come home and you have three days and then you've got San Diego. And I come home from San Diego and in two days, I leave for my granddaughter's wedding. That's what our lives are like. I love you all and God bless all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Valerie, and also Sonia. It's a pleasure to have you both here today, and thank you for being in our workshop. Um, before, let's see. No, let's go ahead and go on with the six person who responded. Your next chairman, who came to us and said that they would like to present a little something to you today, is going to be Shirley Lorraine. She takes care of education and libraries and ESO. So Shirley, you can have like 15 minutes if you would like, however much time you want. And then let's see about that whole box of crayons. You're gonna see where you fit in. So if you would please unmute yourself and Shirley, you would have the floor. Thank you, I appreciate that very much. The, these two sections are really huge. I had no idea how big they were. ESO has always been a passion of mine, and that's been evident throughout the last year. I have to tell you that it has taken almost a year to get the program structured to where it's easy to follow for me and also for everyone else. Um, thank you so much to all the people that have helped to get the forms and all the materials on the CF website so they're available to everybody. And I really appreciate that. We're simplifying. Zoom has helped us understand how much more simple things need to be in order for us to do all the things that we're doing. So my focus has been simplifying the process, simplifying the forms, and I think that's working very well. I would love to know, on specifically for ESO, I would love to know how many of our clubs throughout the state actually participate in ESO. I've heard from a few that are very active, but many of the groups, I, I haven't heard a thing. So I would love to know if your group has uh, an ESO section so that I can personally reach out and answer any questions and encourage people to participate. In the education and library section, another humongous section, um, there's excellent information in the GFWC club manual that's available online. There's a whole section on uh, education and libraries, community service programs, how you can participate in STEM programs, which is a real challenge this year, this last year, especially since schools have not been in session, it's very difficult to know what we have been able, able to participate in. I have a couple of extra thoughts that I'd like to throw out there. Many of our clubs donate books for school libraries, backpacks, school materials, and so forth and so on. August, schools will be back in session. So now is the time to contact schools and say, hey, what do you need this year? Um, other organizations, Rotary and Lions and organizations like that also donate school materials. So maybe there's an overflow of that this year. There must be other groups I'm thinking that we could contact who have some needs. And one of the things that came to my mind is homeschooling groups. Now that we've had this last year with so many people learning from home, we have more and more homeschooling groups. I know in my particular area in Ventura County, there is a huge homeschooling group. They are always looking for people to present projects, to involve the kids in uh, knowledge-based programs. So that's one avenue that we might explore. Also, 4-H clubs, boys and girls clubs. Uh, the Rotary, I believe, has a junior group that is always looking for areas that they can be involved in the community. And I believe that it would be helpful to be able to connect with those groups and do a joint project of some kind. Here's another thought that 
just occurred to me, and I don't know why it's taken me so long to think about it. Uh, I've been a Toastmaster for over 30 years. Toastmasters organization, which is to build public speaking skills, has a program specifically for mm, sixth grade and up. For It's an eight week program, which I have led many times and for the life of me, I cannot now think of the name of it. <laughs> but anyway, it's an eight week program um, that gives students an opportunity to learn how to be a public speaker, how to write a speech, all the basics. And that would be an excellent way for us to not only get together with some of our local Toastmasters clubs, which I know just about every community has, but also it's education for, for the younger students that they can use. Perhaps, um, connecting with the groups that are doing the student government in the high schools and offering that kind of uh, public speaking educational program for them would be a win-win for everybody. The STEM programs, wow, that's, that's really beyond me. There's some very interesting suggestions, um, which I don't have right in front of me. Uh, oh, here it is. I'm telling you, I don't think I could do any of these. Build an archaeologist toolkit. Incorporate the Stone Ages or ancient Mesopotamia, Egypt, Israel, or India into student activities. Engineer a model Masada or a pyramid out of toothpicks. Wow, that sounds like an interesting project. I think we can be creative with all of, with all of that and with the school year now coming back into session, now's the time to contact the schools and say, hey, how can I help? So moving on from education and libraries, I wanna go back to ESO for just a little bit. There's still a lot of confusion about what is ESO and why should we participate? If you got quick bites this week, um, there's an article in there about that program I do want to let you know that there are 25 different categories that you can report your ESO reading. And for those groups that already have a literature group, a book group, whatever you wanna call it, um, tea and books, wine and books, many clubs get together for that purpose, but they're not participating in ESO specifically. And that confuses me because it could be a win-win for everybody. ESO is under education because its focus is education for the members, expanding your horizons. It's not just about how many mystery books do you read or, or how many true crime or anything like that. It's about how do you expand your horizons? And from that, we are able to expand our horizons, not only to our members, but also to our community. Some of the communities that I've gotten information from have a reading group where they go to libraries, they have a set time, and they read out loud to homeless or to sight impaired folks that sign up to come to the group. And that can all count as well under both of these categories. So there's a lot of ways that we can participate. There's a lot of ways we can think outside of the box. And I don't know about you, but I read constantly and it's exciting to me to think about, oh my gosh, I really want to share this information with somebody else. So now that all the new materials are on the website, it should be easy for everybody to participate. And I do get questions frequently. Right now, sitting over here on my table, I'm preparing six new achievement certificates to be sent out this week, just this week. Isn't that amazing? So people are really participating and I appreciate that. And I, encourage everyone to continue to give me questions and thoughts on how the program can be better and easier. 
as I mentioned, I spent almost the entire first year just getting organized because we didn't have a lot of information to work with, basically rebuilding the program, uh, which was my impetus for making it simpler. So I hope that it's working for other people as well. And I, I enjoy this role very much. I appreciate all the support from everybody in CF from all of the districts have just been fantastic. We've had people step up and say, hey, I wanna be chair of ESO in my particular club. We've had new club, book clubs started as a result of all of this. And I think that's great. So now I welcome your questions. Sonia, will you go ahead and start with questions, please? Yes, um, Shirley, there is a, a question in the chat. They're asking you just to give a brief description. They, their clubs don't do ESO, and they're, they're wondering if you could just do a brief description of what ESO is. I would be delighted to do that. And those clubs who are not participating, I invite you to go to the CFWC website and download the what is ESO brochure so that you can have that to give to your members. It's an honorary educational society um, chartered by the state of California through the women's clubs in 1954. The purpose of it is to enhance self-knowledge through reading. And there are tiers. You, there's no cost other than you buying your own books. I buy mine at a lot of thrift stores, so I don't spend a lot. And I trade with other members of my clubs who also are readers. We trade books all the time. What it is, is you learn to read books outside of your normal comfort zone. In other words, if you are a sci-fi reader, that's all you read. When you sign up to become a member of the ESO, which is Epsilon Sigma Omicron, all right, you need to report in four different categories just to start. So, okay, sci-fi will be one because that's one you already read then you might want to go into health and wellness or self-help or California history or biographies. There's a list of, as I mentioned, 25 different categories to choose from. There are suggested book lists on the GFWC website. However, you can read whatever you want, as long as it fits into one of those categories. So you're not limited to Pride and Prejudice and War and Peace, just so you know. <laughs> the only way to, to sign up is, again, from the CFWC website. There's a pledge form. Have your person fill out that pledge form. All it says is, here's my information. I want to participate. And then from there, you start to read. You write a short report. And by short, I do mean short, one or two sentences. What did you learn from reading this book? Okay, maybe you read a murder mystery and you learned 37 ways to use arsenic. That's something that you learn, right? You didn't know before. You write that down, you say, I learned 37 ways to use arsenic and I really enjoyed this book, done. That's your report, okay, four of those completes a category. We have a form that you put four books on one sheet of paper. So one sheet of paper completes one category. And four of those four categories, done. There's your first tier already finished. It's really easy. I see that many of you have lots of books on your bookshelves in the background. And I'll bet you've already read quite a few of them. And if you looked at the categories, you could probably fill out a sheet right now to do a membership. I hope that answers your question. Do get yes, a hold of you, this for sure. Thank you so much. And I, I did go to the website. It is there. They can access everything at cfwc.org. Thank you for mentioning that the website because it does. It's a very comprehensive website. 
<clears throat> so we do have questions for you, my friend. Okay. And I'm going to take a spotlight off so that people can ask. Our first question or comment comes from Mickey Reed. Mickey? Hello, I'm at home sick, so I don't have much of a voice, but um, I just wanted to thank um, Lorraine. She has been so wonderful um, getting all of our certificates. We have a very active group here mm -hmm. and um, we, we, it's our sorority. We have Greek letters that when we hit member status, people are awarded their Greek letters and um, I'm sorry, Shirley, not Lorraine, okay. um, uh, but they're both great names, but, uh, but anyway, we have a song. We do this big induction thing where we pass a torch and it's, it's a thing here, but we just got a new program where we had a new member who worked at the library, join our club. So now we're all teaching adults how to read. Excellent. So we, all the ESO members have an adult person that's illiterate that we're trying to teach to read and it's been a really positive experience i, I just wanted that. to thank you so much shirley you've been just amazing and we're all very thankful thank you mickey appreciate it thank and you mickey our next question or comment comes from linda linda you have a question or comment um <clears throat> yes thank you sonia okay um the question i have is <clears throat> a couple of questions here real quick one club in our district I heard is, <clears throat> is very interested. They're starting, they said a book club. They didn't say ESO. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I can, uh, you mentioned that you would be happy to contact clubs that are thinking about starting up a book club and speak to them about ESO. Yes. Okay. Because I'll, I will send you the name of that club. Wonderful. And the second question also is, <clears throat> If a district doesn't have, I know we used to have the uh, ESO chairman, mm -hmm. okay, um, separate from, edu well, now it's educational libraries. So if we don't have a district ESO chairman, yes. but there's a couple of clubs that all of a sudden they've got book clubs and they're going to start up by interest and by promoting um, an ESO, turn it mm -hmm. into ESO. Um, as far as when they have to do their reports, and if we don't have a district ESO chairman, do they turn their reports into our education and libraries chairman for her to forward? Because what I understood from several years ago, there was a problem where an ESO chairman went directly to GF. And that was a big no-no. She skipped over the state ESO chairman. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you for that. Um, GF doesn't want local reports. Okay, so yes, that is a problem. Um, people can send me the reports directly if there's no district chair. Hopefully there's a club chair at least and the club chairs can forward that information directly to me. That's just fine. Okay, and the ESO, um, somebody had asked me this and I don't remember to have to look at the form again, but the ESO um, uh, this year, as far as reporting goes, is there, a separate line for the ESO or that's going into the education and libraries? Um, no, it's separate. It is separate. Oh, okay. yes. All right. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Shirley, and for all of the work that you're doing. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Our next question or comment comes from Anne's iPhone. Anne? Yeah, I wanted to ask um, how. Um, Audible books fit into this or do they not? They do. Absolutely, they do. Um, I, I'm a big fan of audiobooks and it counts as reading. So do Kindle books. The Good. only thing that the only thing that really doesn't count is magazines. People magazine doesn't count. Reader's Digest doesn't count. But if it's a full-length book, absolutely. May I make one more comment? Please. And and that is that um, I just read Anne of, or I actually listened to Anne of Green Gables. And if somebody wants just a lot of laughter, because I haven't had much this year, it was wonderful. And I never would have even known about it except a friend watches the video. I guess there's a series. I'd never even heard of it. And it was just really joyful. So wanted to share that. Thank, Thank you. you. How wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much for that recommendation. I'm going to re uh, lower your hand. Um, I've had two things in chat. 
One is presenters. Everyone is asking for your email addresses. If you have a minute, can you put those in chat for us, please? Yes, be happy to. Thank you. And then the second thing is they'd like to be reminded how to sign up for Quick Bites. So um, what you would do is go to cfwc.org. You go to the tab that's called publications and then you select, please sign up for both. You will not, you will love both of them or all of them. Um, and you want to sign up for both the California Club Women and Quick Bites. Between the two of them, you will know everything that's going on in state. So thank you for asking for that again. And anytime that you have any of those questions, the communications group has an email that you're welcome to. It's cfwccommunications at a plural at gmail.com and I'll put that in chat for you. And if we cannot answer the question, we will send it to somebody that can. Okay, back to you, Barbara. Thank you very much. I don't know how this part of it's going to go. Thank you so much, Shirley. Wonderful, wonderful presentation. Lots of information out there. I think that everybody's getting lots of questions. Our roofers are like right over my head on the second story right now. Can you still all hear me? I've turned the volume up a lot. I'm, okay, I'm sorry. There's just not a doggone thing we can do about it. I thought about unplugging the computer and moving, but I don't know where to move to. They're everywhere. So we'll give it our best shot. I thought if I left mine to the end, but they're not ready to go to lunch yet. What I did is I took a lot of your yearbooks, many of them, and I went through and looked at what is a chairman and what are their responsibilities and how do you even get to the job that you're doing? Generally, it's an appointed position by the president. That's where the chairmanship comes from. Or I would like to put it to you like this before I go into my few minutes, and that is volunteer. If there is something that you want right now, um, we are filling slots for 2022, 2024. If there's something you're interested in, could you please, please let us know now. Call, say, hey, this is what I want to do. And if it's available, it's yours, okay? So I'm just getting, I just noticed on my watch, I got a message from Toby Cahan right now saying, call me, I wanna to talk to you. So that's what people are doing is they're volunteering for what they wanna do in the next administration. But for this administration, you're all wonderful. I don't know what we would do without you. Um, I sent out some pages, well, Lynn Youngstrom sent out some pages on the Dean of Chairman. That actually came out after it said that August 11th, we were gonna have this chair workshop. You can look at those and if you need them, please let us know because she'd be glad to send them again. She usually will send them out first as a whole packet. Then she sent out Deborah Bushnell's after. But I went through and I found out of a different book, the Officer Chairman's Guide. It's called the Table of Contents. Now I've written notes all over it, but if you want it, I'll send it to you afterwards. And it says, this is a sheet that describes the chairman's duties as they are listed in the bylaws and standing rules of your club or your district. The very first thing you wanna know what your job is, you gotta go to the bylaws and standing rules. We should have a contest for people to uh, win something if they actually read them all. I don't know if you've ever seen the AAA magazine, they have something, a little leaf or, or whatever. And it says, whoever finds this, you can win something, right? Maybe we should be doing that with our club and district bylaws. If you do this, we will give you something. And I'd like to go back to the deans for a moment. For those of you that were there, I said there would be a gift for whatever dean put in the best speaking report. I hope that you will all agree. Kathy Holm from San Diego wrote a long poem about district deans. It is wonderful. We're going to be putting that out. And I um, did send her a note afterwards and said I would be bringing her a small gift to the September board. The same thing with the six of you were all such wonderful presenters today. I'm gonna pick on somebody else. Sonia and Valerie, would you guys choose who was the best presenter today of the six? And I will make sure at September boards, they get a small gift too. Thank you, you're all wonderful. Then I'm just passing along that one. Okay, 
it says that the chairman are supposed to be able to give a description of whatever their project is. Somebody says, oh, I don't know what ESO is. And Shirley Lorraine jumps in and says, this is what my job description is. You should be able to know what your job description is. Hopefully someone's passed on maybe a little procedure booklet or they've gone over the bylaws with you on what your description of your job is going to be, you know, so that you have an idea, you're not just coming in blind because that's hard to do when you walk into a position. Is there a timeline, a little sheet that tells you about any deadlines that could be associated with your chairmanship? I'm supposed to do a report. I have to send a report in, uh-oh. A calendar, a current calendar. I think it's Yolanda saying, I have a little calendar to give out information to you. I don't know if you all have filled out 2022, but I have a lot of it. The dates of the events and the deadlines we're gonna have. When we're gonna go to Sacramento in February. When we're gonna go to the Anaheim Marriott as soon as the contract gets signed for the state convention next year. Also your budget. You know, there are supplies that you need. Postage, what if you're mailing things out? Your paper, how many dollars in your budget? Give it to the dean, the dean of your club, the dean of your district. Maybe it's in the bylaws or the standing rules and it will say that. The bylaws and standing rules are interesting. They're supposed to, if you wanna make a change to the bylaws, most of the bylaws and standing rules say, mail it out, give it to all the members 30 days in advance. Then they come to the meeting and they get to vote. But Wendy doesn't get to say to Kathy Cook, oh, you know what, can you toss in my vote for me? She doesn't get to give her proxy away. She has to be at that meeting to vote. If two thirds of the members then that are present, it passes, then the bylaw can become a bylaw. You haven't sent it out to everybody according to what your bylaws say in writing, maybe you can use email, however it is, then it's not gonna become a bylaw. Standing rules are a lot easier. Usually someone can bring up a motion at your meeting. And if you can get 50%, if you've got a quorum at that meeting, you're gonna be able to change the standing rule. But once again, please, I've looked at so many bylaws and standing rules. We're not too uniform. We're not all the same on the way that you know we do them. When money is spent and you need a reimbursement, if you are a chairman, you fill out a reimbursement form and you're gonna give it to the treasurer. Or in our case at CFWC, you give it to the financial director, Reggie Maddox. Reggie, once it gets okayed by whomever needs to okay it, probably the executive committee, then it's going to go on to the, um, Marsha LaRusso is our treasurer, and then she writes you the check and sends a check off to you. If your dollars are being donated, you can still show us on the reimbursement form so we know what you're doing for dollars that you're donating or in kind. In kind is the hardest one. So if you need help with that, ask Marsha LaRusso, ask Reggie Maddox, ask us. In the 30 pages of report writing we did at all the area meetings last year, I gave you all a sheet that showed what you could use for in kind. If you don't have a budget, then just add a sheet to the procedure book at the end and still write down. I went to this club, I spent this much on gas. I passed out 34 cookies to be decorated as an icebreaker. I bought this many handouts. You know, Pam always says she'll go to like a Dollar Tree or a 99 cent store and she buys a lot of socks. You know, the little, you wear them in your tennis shoes kind of socks, that kind. And she'll pass out socks. You were the first person in your seat. You were the first person to know the answer to this question. Just a little something to entice people to come. Maybe you have a tracking sheet and it will contain the date, the activity, the time, the dollars spent and in kind. A list of who your committee members are with the phone numbers on them so that you can get a hold of somebody quickly. A resource sheet, that's an interesting one for contact information that lists all the people of the organizations that are involved in that product project that you're doing. With GF, a few years ago, it was called partnership. 
Now they changed the name, it's called affiliate. So when you look at the GF affiliate in the CFW year, CFWC yearbook for me, on that page, you did not see canine for companions. GF writes a letter. They have to get permission for that person to partner with them. We did not have that by the time we went to print on last year's yearbook. So we couldn't say canine for companions, but they were there. We mentioned to you once or twice, write them in. This year, Tony Lima, she is fantastic at publications. Oh my gosh, we're blessed to have her. She's already got K9 for Companions in for the GFWC affiliate. It's there. So the letter is back. It is one of our affiliate programs and you'll be able to use that one. Maybe you wanna put in something about club information, organizational services, who are vendors and caterers, so that you know, if we're not here tomorrow, like we hear Pat Bouchard say, oh, I moved in from another state. What happens if we move out to another state? Who is going to handle what our job is? Make sure that you have a procedure book or a manual that that person is going to be able to just pick it up and take over your job for you. Maybe the one of the most important things is a copy if you do a narrative report. If it's available, maybe you have an idea that goes on the report. I will tell you this, I received 18 reports last year that one person chose to take off the chairman's name. If you do the report, if Linda Koontz is writing the report for Linda Kelly, she still, and Linda Kelly is the chairman, she still uses Linda Kelly's name. All 18 of those reports that came in had been changed from the chairman to this one person's name. We don't do that in CFWC, you know? We're not working for the applause. We're doing a job in the community and for our clubs. So try to remember that, that you would want to put the name of the chairman if out of the goodness of your heart, you are doing somebody else's report. A copy of a blank report. Maybe you have to remember, you got to use what's in the CFWC yearbook. Tony is going to do her best to have them there by September. If you don't get them till October, you still have to use the yearbook reports that are in the CFWC yearbook. We can't have 18 districts or 242 clubs making up their own report forms. Very difficult. Do you know that one entire area up in A used blank pieces of paper? That's all we had was a blank piece of paper. We didn't even know what area they were from for a little while. So please use that form. I promise you it's gonna be easy. You'll see when it comes to how this is gonna work in Dropbox. Now, what are they? You're probably gonna want us to send them. The first one was the officer chairman's guide. There was a sheet. You're not gonna be able to see them up close probably like that, but I'll tell you what it said. What is your officer or chairmanship? What are your duties as listed in the bylaws and standing rules? Maybe the prior person that did the job would give that to you. What additional action could be taken by that officer or chairman to increase their effectiveness? Very good idea. Next one comes along and it says, oh, what was a description of the project? You put your name there, your chairmanship, and then it says, what do I need for this project? Do I have to have a site or a venue? What kind of goods am I gonna have to have? What services, et cetera, will I need? Then the number of volunteers. Are you gonna do this all by yourself? Or do you need four or five people to help you? You might. And what is their job description? And what is the time commitment? When you're asking somebody to help you, you can't just say, oh, I need your help. And now they got to put in 20 hours for one week. They might not be so happy for the next time that we ask them. Deadlines. There's probably going to be a deadline on that project because maybe it can't go beyond report writing. Maybe it's a project that the city has a timeline on it if you're doing something. Um, if you're having a fundraiser doing back to school backpacks in Furman Park and Downey, they had to be done by August the 1st. So we can't be finishing these up in September. So you might want that too. 
And then it says, for your reporting writing purposes, list why the project was chosen, who might it benefit, how many volunteers actually worked on it with their hours, what kind of money was involved, raised, spent, or any other details. You know, if you have this like over the top of your desk right now and you fill it in as you go along, oh boy, is that report easy. There's next sheet and this one says officer and chairman's guide. It says the name, the address, the phone number and the email of everybody that's on your project, whatever it is. Maybe it is ESO in a club. Maybe it is um, GFWC Hope, our new club that Mickey Reed has got in. Maybe it's going to be something for literature or some other group, uh, the veterans. I know that the last time I talked to Alyssa Tresaurus, her and Ed were out buying things to take to the VA in Long Beach. Put it on this piece of paper and it's gonna be real easy when it comes report writing. We want report writing to be easy so that you don't groan when we say we need the report. Let's make this as much fun as we possibly can. Then I happen to have two trusty little pieces of paper. And these pieces of paper have every month of the year on them. Maybe your project comes up in November, or maybe your project is gonna be March for the following year. But I jot, matter of fact, I gave you clean ones today, but if you saw mine, they're already filled in. They all sit behind my desk or on the wall. You know, if you have a, a blackboard or a board that you're using, and you put then your timeline for the year. You became a member when? Probably May 31st, you went out and June 1, you come in. And then you go to the following May. Ours happens to go from June until May. And we list every single month so that it shows where you're going to be. And last, I have a sheet called the Officer Chairman's Guide for Notes. What kind of notes do you want? You want to see what I've taken today? Look at this. We have now had 28 questions. These are my notes from today. And I have two pages filled out on this too. Chairman's notes, August 11th, 2021, with all six of your speakers that you just had that presented. And what did they say? So that I know it's recorded, but I'm not always going to go back to that. I like having it in black and white in paper. Last Lastly, you're not going to get this one for sure. You can have everything else, but it's the club award entry form and you're going to have the forms, but it really, at the end of the year, it does say, what was that project title? How many hours did we put in? What did we donate? What was in kind? That all goes on your report form. So you'll be able to have that. But those are the things that we use all year long. You do them and Report writing will be so easy, we'll promise you at the end. But I just thank each and every one of the chairmen. You, you're all wonderful, magnificent, and I want you to know they just decided to go on a lunch break. <laughs> so the, that's why the pounding is stuck. Now they're going to be gone for 35 minutes. Oh my. Um, that really is what I have. And Lynn, is there anything? How about we'll make sure that we get these pages. I'll send everything to Lynn and she can send them to everybody that was here today. Would that be good? She'll send it out. All right. And Lynn Youngstrom, would you like to tell them about what's coming up next, please? Lynn, if you're here, you got to unmute. I saw you once. Okay, uh, well, I, yeah, I you think here? you're going to have to, the next one is membership. Barbara, why don't you tell them about membership? Okay, yep. Or maybe so on Saturday, <laughs> Saturday, August the 14th, from one to three, all the time zones have changed now. We're not in 10 to noon anymore. This was your last one today. We will be doing navigating within GFWC, and it will be Pam. She'll be doing that one. I might as well give you the rest. August 17th, which is a Tuesday from one to three, it will be the membership officers. And then on Monday, August 23rd, from six to 8 p.m., bring your glass of wine and your cup of coffee and your iced tea or sweet tea. 
because it's going to be a very interesting two hours from six to eight, walking away from the job you're in now and looking ahead to your new job without micromanaging the job we're in now. I'm really looking forward to that one myself. Um, anything else for any of you? If not, we're pretty much on time. We thank you all for being here and we will see you on Wednesday, August, wait, on Saturday, August 14th, one to 3 p.m. Anything else?